right, everybody, welcome back to First Attack. I'm talking about learning Street Fighter from the lowest of fundamental levels and how to pick up the game if you've literally never touched a fighting game before. I've gone through a couple of different, um, you know, ph philosophical ideas, mostly about, you know, learning your character and learning, um, hold on a second, and learning how to, um, and learning how to react to the opponent character because that's the that's the environment. Again, you think about a shoot 'em up. The bullets are what you react to. When you think about a racing game, you react to turns, platformer. You react to where the platforms are. So learn to react to what the opponent character is actually doing in a fighting game. You know, treat it like a game where you're fighting a boss, like in God of War, and he's running around you, and you're trying to chase him down, or in Devil May Cry and stuff like that. You're you're reacting to what the opponent is doing. So so make sure when you play to always take a look at what the opponent is doing. Try to recognize the patterns and trying to learn how to defeat him that way. So the last part of this um, is learning. Oh yeah. Again, at the end of the slides, I put down where the best place to learn these fundamentals are. And in this particular case, it's uh, versus the computer. So, the last one is learning what you can learn. Learning what it is that you have to learn about the game. And this basically boils down to experimentation. Right, so I talked about picking your pet moves. Uh, you know, with Rufus, I chose a standing medium punch, crouching heavy punch, or whatever like that, right? So you start learning how to beat the computer through patterns and using these, you know, I call them comfort moves here, right? So basically, it's just your favorites. You, you find that these buttons are really good. You find that these things are really good. For example, if you're Ryu, if you picked up Ryu first and you learn how to throw Hadoukens, you may spend the whole game sitting on the other side of the screen throwing Hadoukens, and the computer's just gonna walk into them all day, and you're gonna be the entire game by throwing Hadoukens at people. Fine, go for it, do it, do it. Learn the game that way at first. Basically, just learn how to play the game and understanding what the opponent is doing and such like that. You know, as you're throwing, as you're, as you're chucking, chucking fireballs, you know, just don't ever stop looking at, you know, don't ever stop focusing on the opponent and just looking at your character and just throwing fireballs. Still keep in mind, in mind what the opponent character is doing. Hopefully in the later difficulty levels, they'll start jumping over the fireballs and punishing you. So now you get scared to throw fireballs. So... You know, that's a good thing to learn because you learn what the weaknesses are of it and stuff like that. So, again, you'll learn how to beat the computer with all your comfort moves. Now is the time to start experimenting with new moves. This is where you start doing the shift back and forth between training mode and fighting the computer. <clears throat> so let's say I picked the moves that I did with Rufus. I picked the standing medium punch, crouching heavy punch, roundhouse messiah, and I picked jumping fierce. <clears throat> what I have noticed is whenever the computer jumps at me, I don't know what to do. None of my buttons work very good. They do a jump attack. My standing medium punch gets beat. My crouching heavy punch certainly doesn't work. I can't get into the air fast enough with my jumping, uh, with my jumping heavy punch or whatever like that. And Messiah Kick's not going to work. So, uh, you know what? I really want to find a move now that can hit people out of the air. So I'm going to go back into training mode, and I'm going to start playing around with my character a little bit more. Remember when I first started, I hit standing heavy punch, and he punched diagonally up, like 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 this. He punched like this, basically. And um, I said, whoa, that looks weird, because it looks like he's trying to punch the sky. Well, now when I go back into training mode, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm having trouble when the computer jumps at me. I want to find a good move to hit him. Now I have this button that hits people out of the sky. So now I'm going to start using this button. So I'm going to learn to use this button to hit the computer when he jumps at me. I've added a new pet move into my game. And so I, I have this new pet move. I go back to play the computer. Whenever they jump at me, I hit heavy punch and I start punching them out of the air. Problem is, you'll probably learn at some point in time that, you know, it's kind of slow, hard to react with. You hit it too late, the computer still hits you before it comes out. Now you're starting to understand concepts of startup of moves. You're like, what? This move is slow. Like, I can't hit people out of the air fast enough because when they jump at me, I can't react to it fast enough and then they kick me. Unless I've noticed a pattern and notice when they jump, then when they jump, I'm all ready to go and punch them out of the air. 
But then, you know, you're like, okay, I want to figure out other things, so I'm just going to go back to training mode and start messing around, finding some new pet moves. And then all of a sudden you discover Crouching Strong, and you're like, hey, look, this hits above my head, and I get really far down, and it's faster. So now I'm going to go and play computer again. When they jump at me, I'm hitting Crouching Strong. And you start to find out, wow, this works way better than that standing heavy punch as an anti-air, as to hit people when they're jumping at me. And then this is what happens. You drop a pet move, you drop a comfort move, and you replace it with a different comfort move. This is again why it doesn't matter what your comfort moves you pick up in the first place. Your only goal is just to have something to start with so that when you go and fight the computer, you're not button mashing. So they're not hitting all the buttons. You're concentrating on specific moves. You've learned now how to use specific moves and then once you start fighting new pet moves to replace old pet moves, you already have this concept of which buttons to go to. And what you'll find out is that through time, you'll start amassing a good chunk of moves that you start to like as the ones that turn out that another move does it better. Like for example, if I find out about standing medium kick, which reaches farther than my standing medium punch with Rufus, I'm going to switch to that button all of a sudden. I'm going to stop using standing medium punch. So I've changed, once again, a pet move to something better. And as you keep playing, you'll keep replacing moves like that until you start finding a really strong fundamental set of pet moves. And then you start playing with this. So, and, and, and even when you go to the computer, like I said, if you use Ryu and you Hadouken the computer to death, you Hadouken the computer to death, they all walk into it, they all die. And you think to yourself, you know what, I can beat the game, but that's not my, my goal. I'm trying to learn. So this is dumb. Like, I'm not learning anything with this. So you can actually just get rid of the Hadouken. Stop using the Hadouken altogether and just start trying to beat him with other stuff. Start playing with other moves. Heck, if you look at a move, if you go and play in a move and you're like, I have no idea why this move would be useful at all. Start abusing the move against the computer. Start messing with that move and start understanding how it hits, the timing of it. You may find out a, a particular situation that you kind of like. You're like, hey, this is kind of neat. Like if you're using Rufus Jump Roundhouse and early on you find out that when you jump in on someone, you hit Roundhouse, it's really hard to hit him because it kicks diagonally up. It doesn't hit diagonally down. So you're like, man, this is a terrible jump attack. Why would I ever use this jump attack? Go play the computer and use nothing but that button. Just jump at him all day and keep hitting that button. And eventually, you may find out that it works really good against airborne opponents. The computer jumps at you and you're like, wait a minute, this kick hits diagonally up, so I'm just going to jump and hit roundhouse and kick him out of the air. You're like, cool, this works. And then you notice they hit the ground. Or maybe you're mashing a button and you punch him out of the air or something like that with an extra juggle or something. You know, you can find all sorts of weird magical things like that. And so you just start building up the repertoire as you go. Then you move the computer to higher difficulties and you keep doing this kind of thing. So you keep tweaking what moves that you're using constantly and you start amassing the moves that you feel comfortable with. You start feeling like, okay, this is a really good move. I like this and such like that. See, what you're doing, again, is you're building a base. And as you fight the computer and then go back to training mode and then fight the computer and go back to training mode, what this does is when you finally get to the point where you play people online, you have a base of moves that you already know that you want to go to, that you already feel confident in using. Street Fighter is all about confidence. The more unsure and the more nervous you are, the worse you are going to play. That is number one thing about Street Fighter is that you want to get used to situations that, that occur. And... As you keep playing the game and building up your repertoire of comfort moves and you start learning that Crouch Strong works against jumpers or that Jump Fierce works really good when I jump over a projectile, what you start to pick up subtly, not intentionally, is not the fact that they're pet moves but, or comfort moves, but these are now comfort situations. And this is not something that you're going to be aware of right away. And you don't have to be aware of it. But it's kind of good to point out right now if you're just learning the game. These comfort moves, these pet moves that you have, transform 
into something that you know to do in a particular situation. When you see the computer, the see the opponent far away, you automatically register into your head, you know what, I like hitting crouch heavy punch. And it's going to reach them over there. So you start doing that with Rufus. When the opponent jumps at you, you're going to start doing crouch strong because you got used to doing that against the computer. Again, then it stops being a comfort move and it becomes a comfort situation. And once you have started establishing these comfort moves and comfort situations, now you can go online against and play people. When someone jumps at you, you're gonna try your comfort situation. You're gonna try your crouch strong. You're gonna run into a jump attack that's gonna beat it. You're gonna run into some you know, scumbag cami that's gonna jump and do a dive kick and your crouch strong is gonna come out too fast, it's gonna hit you. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You still have the right reaction. You still know what you are trying to go for. You're still starting to recognize situations. You're still recognizing things. And because when you played against the computer, you're trying to memorize patterns and you're trying to study the computer and you're reacting to the opponent character, you've learned how to do that in versus mode as well. When you first play against people, you're going to have to treat them like a super hard computer and they're going to kick your ass. But as long as you can do the right thing in a couple of situations, this ties into the first episode that I had this year where I talked about, you know, having certain situations that you're comfortable with so that you can concentrate on the areas that you're not comfortable with. If you're having trouble hitting them with your standing medium kick and you're having trouble hitting them out of the air with crouching medium punch, you're not going to learn anything because they're going to jump at you, they're going to walk at you, they're going to destroy you. But the more you get comfortable with whenever they jump, you're like, oh, crouching medium punch. And you don't have to think about it anymore. It's just a reaction because it's turned into a comfort situation. Now you can focus on trying to hit them with that standing medium kick, learning to walk up close enough to hit them with that button. Because every time you're trying to hit them and then they jump, you're like, oh, crouch strong. You build up that situation. You build up that reaction. And that'll help you ease your way into a versus match. So now you can advance. Now you can start trying to learn technical details. Uh, and this, this goes all into all the other episodes that I've done and stuff like that. You notice that one of the things that I've left out completely is combos. I haven't talked about punishing. I haven't talked about maximizing damage because don't learn combos. Do not learn combos when you first start the game. Do not learn combos. Just hit them, do damage, lose, doesn't matter. Just do what you can. Just do what you can. You may accidentally stumble upon jumping heavy punch into standing medium punch, and you learn that's a two-hit combo. So you start relying on that. Good for you. Good. Save. That's it. That's all you need to do. So don't learn combos right away. Just learn how to fight with, their, with the buttons that you've chosen. Once you get to the point where you feel confident enough to actually play and maybe think about combos when your brain is ready for combos, then you can start going into those, those terrible trial modes and just start trying some stuff. But honestly, like... Get a, I think there's like 24 trials or whatever like that. Just just do like halfway for your character. So you just learn what's cancelable, what connects, what's a combo. Like with Rufus, you'll learn about the short roundhouse chain and you'll be like, whoa, this is neat. I'm going to learn short roundhouse. Then it tells you to do short roundhouse into ultra and you're like, whoa. But the thing about it is when you go back and play the computer, you've already developed all these fundamentals for hitting standing medium kick and for anti-airing. Now when you see the guy miss the uppercut, when you recognize that pattern that I talked about and they miss that uppercut, you see you have an ultra meter, now you're going to walk him and go, oh, wait a minute, there was that trial mode combo, short roundhouse ultra. So you're going to try this instead, right? But the, the whole point is that you weren't trying to learn it all at once. So don't try to learn combos right away. That is something that you pick up on later. Again, start small, easy combos. Don't do one frame links. Don't try to do FADCs that you see on stream and in match videos and stuff like that. Just, just don't, don't do it. Um, start basic, start basic. And then of course, you're gonna go back to watching streams. You're gonna go watch match videos on YouTube and try to figure out what your character's gonna do. Uh, I spoke to someone at Final Round about this, about how to watch match videos, because that's what he asked me. He, he asked me, what's the best way to watch match videos? I may do a whole episode on this, but the two key points that I've always mentioned is, if you're watching Rufus matches, um, and you're a Rufus player, concentrate on Rufus. Think about Rufus. Watch that character. Watch what Rufus is doing, and watch when he does stuff that you wouldn't have done. If he does something that you've never thought of or seen doing, 
you know, if I, like pretend you're playing the character. Pretend you're like walking up. I want to hit medium punch, and all of a sudden he walks up and sweeps him. And you're like, wow, hit sweep is pretty good, which it's not really, but still, you know, in your mind, you're like, hey, that's pretty good. So maybe I'll try to incorporate that. Or you try to do something like the opponent misses something and he punishes with standing fierce into galactic tornado. And you're like, ooh, that's kind of cool. Or you see him do galactic tornado into one galactic tornado hit in the corner. And you're like, whoa, that's weird. I didn't know I could hit someone out of the air like that. Or jumping roundhouse into snake strike. Anytime they do something that's unexpected, just pick up on that. But just put yourself in the shoes of one of the players. Don't ever watch it so that you're watching two characters fighting on screen if you're trying to learn while watching. Even if you're watching characters you don't know. Just like if you're watching, for example, uh, Chris G versus uh, XSK Samurai. You're watching a Ryu versus Sakura. Root for one side. Pick one of the players to root for. And whoever you root for, put yourself in that person's shoes. Watch the match from that character's point of view. And that'll help you learn a lot from watching match videos. And again, keep note of whenever crazy things happen. Like, what the heck? I, I, I didn't know you could do that, you know? And, and anytime that my thing pops into your head, anytime that jars you, anytime you get jarred while you watch a video, especially on YouTube, rewind, go back, and take a look at exactly what happened and try to figure out. If you don't understand it, don't worry about it. You can ask later on or whatever like that. But the important thing is when you watch match videos, that's kind of one of the things you want to do. Put yourself in one's shoes and keep in mind when unexpected things happen. Again, this slide here is later tactics. This is after you learn the first three fundamentals that I talked about, okay? So learn those things. Now you can jump into this step. I just wanted to get, I just wanted to put up the slide just to make sure I could talk about one. Combos, don't learn them right away. Don't care about them right away. And two, you're going to be watching a lot of stream and match videos. This will help you learn how to, uh, a, 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 an educational, productive way to watch them. So that's it for this episode. Um, three fundamental things again. Learn yourself, learn your environment, and learn the things that you can learn. And then you can advance onto the higher technical stuff. Then you can advance to a lot of the more uh, things that I've talked about in other episodes, combos, and all that stuff. But um, this is, um, I, I, like I said, I've been thinking about this from the most basic of viewpoints because, like I said, uh, I have a friend now who's trying to learn it, and everything that I've told him like, just doesn't make sense to him. So I needed to dial it back even more. And that's what I've attempted to do today. I don't know if it'll help, but if, it, if, you, if you did think it helped, you know, definitely tweet us at TV. Also, um, uh, leave comments on the YouTube video, letting me know if it helped you or not. And lastly, um, very important, I have a segment on First Attack every once in a while that I call Ask Jay Chenzor. And um, you can send emails to ultrachentv at gmail.com with the subject of Ask Jay Chenzor, and I will answer all sorts of questions, all levels of questions from the most basic stuff. So if you watch and you're learning and the stuff that I've talked about in this episode still aren't quite helping and you're running into a problem, shoot me an email, once again, ultrachentv at gmail.com, and then uh, subject line Ask Jay Chenzor, and hopefully uh, just keep track of, you know, TV on Twitter, at TV. And, um, you know, hopefully the next time you'll see me tweet out that I'm doing an Ask Jay Chenzor episode, hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions. So, um, yep, that's it for now. And um, stick around, guys. Once we come back, we're going to be going right into Level 3 Focus with Ultra David. So stick around. Peace out, everybody. Oops, hang on.